Hey everyone, my name is Jason. I'm a solo game developer living in Sweden. I'm working on my dream little game. I have no idea how it's gonna go, but I also do a bunch of other things. I've, uh, and that's kind of why, <laughs> that's kind of why there hasn't been a video in, I think, maybe two months or something. I've been working uh, a bunch with uh, Among the Wild. So I've been working on my game. I've been working on Among the Wild. We've been closing on a, a closed alpha update. And so that's been something that I've been focusing a little bit on as well. I've been focusing a lot on trying to rest in the evenings to varying degrees of success. Also been streaming every Saturday, twitch.tv slash gemballs, playing some video games. Do stop by if you want to have some fun. Also been doing some dev streams throughout the week over the past couple of weeks as well, and I hope to continue those. Um, so make sure you catch those too. Also, I multi stream to YouTube if you prefer that. So link in description below if you want to check out the live stream channel. Uh, what else have I been doing? Oh yeah, there's also two other side projects that I've been putting together. Uh, and I can't really talk about them right now. One of them I think you're going to be pretty excited about. The other one, I have no idea what people are going to think of. So it's going to be kind of interesting. But both of those are like nearing the end as well. So like I won't have that workload on me for much longer too. So hopefully that means that there's going to be more time for more devlogs soon. But anyway, we're here, right here, right now with the devlog. Going to cover one of the things that I've made some progress on over the past couple months. I can't cover all the things that I've done over the past couple months because it's too much. We're going to do it over many different videos. But I hope to get through the backlog of videos that I wish to make. Today's video is going to be on the dialogue manager. Uh, I've made my own dialogue manager, if you didn't know, for my game. Uh, link up here in the cards if you haven't seen the you know original video and you want to see you know where it started. Um, and yeah, so in since using the dialogue manager a bunch more. Uh, this past couple of months to implement cutscenes and things like that, I found that there's a bunch of like convenience functionality things that I wanted to add it to it, uh, wanted added to it basically. So I've been working on those. So let's go through it all. Okay. So if you haven't seen my dialogue manager, this is what it looks like here. Uh, and we've got dialogue containers on the left hand side, and then on the right hand side we've got dialogue strings basically, right? And the way th this is structured is that all the relevant strings to a specific dialogue exist in one container. So at that point in time in the game, you just load that one container. So you're only loading the relevant strings for the upcoming dialogue. And then on the right hand side, we can edit uh, the dialogue strings here and save them. Uh, so let's make a new container. We'll call it test one. And it's under the dialogue update vid folder. We can make it a new dialogue string here. And then we'll say, hello world, maybe something like that. And then from here, we can uh, call the the dialogue. So here I've got a little debug function. I just press zero and it runs whatever's in here. So I do a begin generic cutscene and then I call a PG dialogue container DC equals get dialogue container. And then I put the path in, which was debug, debug was lowercase, debug lowercase, and then dialogue update vid test one. Debug dialogue vid test one I think it was that and then I can call it dialogue DC zero actually I'll make this I've got a bunch of helper functions for this and I think I'll call this uh, dialogue until any tag this will make it things a bit easier later on I think um, yeah so I have a bunch of helper functions for how to call dialogue you can call a specific dialogue by index by a tag a range of dialogues there's all sorts of uh, helpful things okay so uh, if I run this now, we'll uh, launch into my game and I can press zero and then the dialogue should just appear. The hello world one that we just made. Hello world, there it is. Easy. Very good. So the first improvement that I want to talk about real quick is that I've now, as you noticed, I had to like go back to the engine, check the the relevant the relative path of the dialogue and then put it back in here and that's kind of annoying right it would just be nicer if i can get the whole path and then just paste that path in and you could do that in the file explorer you could just do that here right but you can also now i've added this button copy path you can just take that and then you can just put that in there and that will work okay the other thing though is while we're at it we might as well have support for uids as well and uid stands for like a universal id so if i copy this I click that button i get its uid and that's the uid there uh and the benefits of uids if you weren't aware is that it's not a file path anymore it's that every file has a unique id and this uid refers to the file that we were just looking at this dialogue container so it doesn't matter where the dialogue container is anymore. So if we take that into account, dialogue update vid, this is currently in the debug folder. If we take it out of debug, put it into dialogue, 
and run this. Actually, I'm not sure if we've compiled the code or not. So, all right, so we've built the game again. We're using the UID, press zero, hello world, it works. So yeah, the, that's the first thing is basically full path support and UID support. Very cool. Uh, the next thing that I wanna show off real quick is a big thank you to a commenter uh, on one of my previous videos. And this person is Virtual Dusk. Thank you so much for your comment. Uh, not super important at this stage in dev, but as a, the resident annoying visual novel programmer in the audience, I'm obligated to suggest you look into the visible character's behavior uh, property on your dialogue text box label, assuming that's how you're doing the typewriter effect. And they're correct. Setting it to characters after shaping will prevent situations where a word starts appearing on a line and then it pops down to a second line. So let's demonstrate that issue. And this was annoying the hell out of me, right? So let's do a really long word here. Let's say this is the, maybe it's too long, I'm not sure. No, it's probably fine. Uh, let's just say this is the dialogue that they're saying. Uh, what you're gonna notice is when we get to that long word, it's gonna start spelling it out and then it's gonna pop down to the next line when it runs out of room, right? And this problem annoyed the heck out of me. Ready? See that it pops down to the next line? So I'll do it again. There, it pops down. This is super annoying. Um, and I wasn't really sure how I was gonna solve it, but Virtual Dust just comes in with this co uh, comment and all you need to do is I select my text box. I go down to, where are you? Visible characters behavior, change this to characters after shaping and we're done. The whole thing is fixed. So now what you're gonna see is the really long word because it can't fit on the top line will start on the second line instead. Oh, so clean, right? Super easy. So thank you very much, Virtual Dusk, for uh, that uh, tip. Really appreciate it. The next feature that I want to showcase real quick is going to be the custom name feature that I've added as well. So now, let's say, for example, uh, this is a character, one of the existing characters in the game. It can be Ember. Let's say we'll get rid of all this shit. Um, and we'll say, she says, hey there, right? Uh, great writing. But let's say we don't know who she is. She's just some strange girl. I've never seen her before, or not that we remember. So we'll just, we can, what we can do is we can give her a custom name because right now her name Ember will appear. But what, what I can do is I can call her strange girl instead. So then when she shows up, it says strange girl here instead of her name Ember. Um, and so she says, hey there, right? Uh, and and the other thing with this custom name is that it is um, localizable. It's fetched by the localization gathering uh, tool that I have. Um, and uh, so that can be localized into any language as well. So, you know, she could say, you know, did you forget? My name is Ember. Right, but then here we can have no custom name set. And what we should have is that she'll say both of these dialogues. Um, hey there. You forget my name is Ember, but she said her name here, so her name changes to Ember, basically. So that's how that works, okay? New custom name feature, pretty nice. The next thing that I wanna go over is, um, there's BB code stuff, right? Um, so uh, rich text fields in Godot support BB code. BB code, if you don't know what that is, it's just like a formatting thing. It's like a markup kind of thing, where you can uh, format your text with like bold, italic, give it colors, whatever. Um, so let's let's do a little bit of BB code here. Did you forget? First little tiny thing is that I didn't have support. For, I didn't render the BB code here previously, I think, but I do now. So anyway, that's there and that's cool. So here, did you forget? So we've got some BB code here. My name is Ember. We can maybe say, I got you a potion the other day. Right, she says that. Now I've added some now, the thing that I really want to talk about is that I've added some custom BB code uh, tags to my system. And one of them is the item tag. So I can tag this. And so now the potion, the word potion is going to be bold and yellow uh, because it's in the item tag. Item tag makes the items bold and yellow. And the purpose of this is just to draw the player's attention to certain things and I'll have different colors or different stylings for different things. So, um, so items can be one, names can be another, locations can be another, special information, just to just draw the, the player's attention to be like, oh, this is key information or, um, or we're, we're referencing an item right now because it's the same color as every other item in, in dialogue, basically. That's what it's for. 
uh, and that's how that works. So the way that I do that is I add a um, the way that I do that is I add a custom rich text effect. Uh, right now, this is uh, inheriting from PG rich text effect, but that that, that does nothing right now. It, if you just have something that inherits from a uh, rich text effect, um, you could just do this. I'm gonna put it back. Um, and and then you can have your public string BB code here and you set it to something and that becomes the tag that gets used at, in the BB code. And then you can override this function and you can start making changes. Now this function is, um, it operates on every uh, character that gets passed in within the tags. Uh, and, and then you can do certain operations on those characters, such as changing their color. You can change their position and do it like animations and all sorts of stuff. Um, but one thing you might notice is that I'm not bolding the text here at all. And that's because as far as I can tell, you can't do that here. If anyone knows of a way to do that here, bold or italicize or underline, please let me know. I'd love to, I'd love to know. But as far as I, as far as I know, you can't do that here. And I think it might be something to do with the way that fonts work. Like if you want a bold font, what it's supposed to do is fetch a different font, like the bold version of the font. Um, and, and then you use that font instead for that text. But at this point in time, at this level where we're just passing in, uh, the character information that we're about to draw, it might be way too late to start fetching a different character glyph from a different font. That's my understanding, but I would love clarity on this. If you know better, please comment down below. But right now it doesn't bolt. That's the thing. So we, but we need a solution for that. So my solution was basically to make this parse custom tags function. And the way this works is I have a dictionary of decorators uh, and these decorators can be bold, italic, underline, anything else that I need to add later. Uh, and then I put on the right hand side the tags, the custom tags that they should apply to. Uh, and then I do the magic here, right? So right now item is bold. It's not italicized or underlined, but we could make them those, right? So we could just take that, put that there. Take this, put it there. We could run this. Um, and then when we talk to Ember, hey there, strange girl. Ember, did you forget my name is Ember? I got you a potion the other day. It is bold, italicized, underlined, and yellow. Okay, so that's how I'm working with my uh, BB code uh, things uh, now. So that's up and running, nice to have. Uh, the next thing that I wanna show real quick is the mass delete feature. And the mass delete feature is basically what it sounds like, the ability to just mass delete things. So right now deleting things is you have to click edit, then delete, edit, and then delete. It's a little bit slow, but if you use the mass delete feature, there's a big red button on the top right hand corner here, click on that, click delete, 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 and boom, everything's gone. Turn off mass delete. So that's a nice little feature as well. Good. Uh, and then the last thing that, last modification that I made was on the PG generic dialog. I had, I have these strings here, which are generic dialogs that have wild cards in them that get substituted out for values. So for example, um, a generic obtained message thing could be, you obtained one bottle of uh, potion, right? Or you bought, two pairs of shoes or something like that. Uh, or success, you caught a bass or something, right? And the fish name gets put in. That's what these wild cards are. So these strings here, not only are strings that can be used for this, but they have to also be localizable as well. And they are. And that's where the, the change comes in. So previously using, I was using string format. It's a function in, in C sharp where you string dot format. Um, and then you have to pass in the variables that are in there, right? Something like that. And what this will do is, you know, the number zero here will be substituted out for the first thing and then so on and so forth. You can change the order of them, that's no problem, right? You can do that kind of thing, that's no problem. But the, the problem I had with this um, was that I wanted it to be more intuitive for the translators, right? Um, <clears throat> so for example, that's why, that's why right now, the way they are, and that's the improvement that I've made, is that the wild cards are now named wild cards that get substituted out. Um, and this is so that in translation software, and this is an example of that, these are the strings here, instead of a translator who, who maybe hasn't even, I don't know if they've played the game, or, or who knows, um, instead of them dealing with zero, one, and two, and they have to change the order of things around in some cases, potentially, um, depending on the language, because not all languages have the same sentence structure, um, and keeping track of these numbers, 
uh, they can just use these wild cards, which are much more intuitive. I could have always provided a, a, a comment on the right hand side here, which I did, um, which is what I had before. I, I would I would provide like what each number was, you know, explaining that to the translator, kind of like this. But it's just more intuitive if if they're wild cards, right? And that's the improvement that I made in that regard. I think it would just make it easier for them and less uh, uh, less room for human error as well. Okay, yeah. And so I think that's pretty much all I wanted to share today. Those are the little updates to the Dialogue Manager plugin. If you liked the video, please leave a like. Helps a lot. Leave a comment below. And do consider subscribing in case you want to stay tuned for more devlog content as well. Don't forget, streaming every Saturday. I still do that as well um, uh, over on twitch.tv slash gemballs. But it's multi-streamed here on YouTube on my live channel, Jace Riley Live. Uh, be sure to you know tune in for those. Uh, if you want to check out devlog streams, they happen randomly throughout the week, usually in the morning, European time. Uh, so you can stay tuned for that. You can join the Discord. There's a link in the description below. And you can join the live stream enjoyer role if you want to be notified ahead of time, like an hour or so before or earlier in the day, um, if I'm going to be going live with a bonus like dev stream or game stream or something like that. Uh, or if you just simply want to hang out in chat, uh, between streams. You can do that on the Discord. Okay? So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all next time. Have a great one. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.